marks. We will see our webinar objectives, um, an introduction to our panelists, a presentation, a question and answer session. We'll have reference from FB Insight Collection, a vote of thanks, and we'll also have um, our announcements. Now I will work on us to do something way more interesting. If you look at your chats, you'll be able to see a link on, um, oh, you'll be able to see on your screens um, a, 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 a poll where you can be able to answer. Are we all able to see? We can use the reaction button to put a thumbs up or we can just chat, uh, chat on the chat box and just say yes if you're able to see um, the pre-webinar um, poll. Which has uh, two questions. Which says, please let us know what country you're joining us from, and please let us know what role are you playing on mental health service provision. Are we all able to see? I'll give us a uh, two minutes to be able to answer um, this poll. Great, I'm seeing yes, we can see it. So that's good. yes, I'm seeing people asking yes. And anyone still to join our, our pre webinar before? We just want to know um, where you're from. Um, please let us know what country you're joining from, and please let us know what role you are playing in the mental health uh, service provision. And the second question is a multi-choice, so you can, a multiple choice question, so you can choose um, as many um, as you are working on. Great. Um, right, so now that we are done, I would like to wonderfully introduce our moderator for today, uh, Ms. Nancy Wamundila, who is a Chief Nursing Officer at Chia Mana Hills Mental, uh, Mental Teaching Hospital in, uh, in Lusaka, Zambia. So, um, Ms. Nancy is um, a Chief Nursing Officer at Chia, at Chia Nama Hills Ment, uh, mental Teaching Hospital in Lusaka, Zambia, bringing over two decades of experience. She holds a diploma in nursing and an advanced diploma in midwifery, a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in psychiatry and mental health nursing. Ms. Wamundila's exp expertise in psychiatric and mental health nursing guides her leadership in delivering high-quality patient care. She is deeply committed to mental health and nursing, making her a valuable asset to Zambia's healthcare community. Um, welcome, Ms. Nancy. Thank you very much, Nina. We will look at the webinar objectives, which are to equip nurses and midwives in sexual and reproductive health settings with practical strategies to add address mental health challenges and uh, boost the resilience. The second one is to raise awareness of mental health challenges like burnouts, compassionate fatigue, and various uh, uh, vascular trauma encountered by nurses and midwives in productive health setting. The third one is to improve the ability to recognize early signs of mental health issues, oneself and colleagues, enabling timely intervention and support. And uh, then the last one is to provide evidence-based techniques for self-care, stress management, and resilience building among healthcare professions. Um, I would like to welcome all the participants. Welcome to this wonderful webinar. Uh, today we are looking at mental health and reproductive health. So it's quite going to be an exciting uh, uh, webinar. So I welcome all the participants. I welcome all the Exacon members. 
at the Exacon Regional Office. Our come members from uh, NFPA, Japaigo, World Health, and any other, any other people who have joined us who I may have left out. So I would further like to welcome the registrar of the Exacon, that is Madam Elizabeth Ouya. I welcome you, Madam, and I would like you to uh, welcome the members and give your speech, your opening remarks. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nancy, for the introduction. I want to join you in welcoming everyone to the webinar today, being the third one. We are grateful to AMREF and the partners for organizing this. Um, this is a very important topic for me, especially uh, because I'm a, a practicing mental health nurse that I've practiced for the last more than 30 years. And so I know what challenges now are going on in the area of mental health. And this could not have come at the this opportune time. So welcome everyone to this uh, webinar. By the time I took the last poll, we were 13 EXA countries, 13 EXA countries, and we had three countries from outside the EXA region, but in Africa, and we had someone from outside Africa viewing us from Thailand. So I want to welcome everyone from the world to this uh, webinar. We hope that the learning that will take place will be able to put it into practice in our areas of jurisdiction. So thank you once again. So what is Exacon? Allow me to say this for the sake of those who are joining and maybe they are not members of Exacon. Exacon is a professional body of nurses and midwives in the Exa region. It has been in existence since 1990 as a creation of the health minister's um, conference resolutions. And so we are a legal entity and we exist to promote uh, professional excellence in nursing and midwifery across the region. And our motto is professional excellence. In the past, we have done many trainings and now we have started with the um, fellowship trainings, which are very exciting, very prestigious. And so we welcome everyone to find out about this in our website. We also participate in conferences every two years, biannual conferences. This year, we are going to be in Lesotho in the month of September. We want to welcome everyone to visit exacon.org exacon.org so that you'll be able to register for the conference and join. It's an exciting time and we hope that we will also have a session today. So once again, I welcome everyone. Please um, be with us up to the end so that you can also participate in the, in the question and answer session. Thank you, Madam Moderator and the very good facilitators that we have. I warmly welcome you on behalf of the president of Exacon, Madam Glory Msibi, and also the entire executive. Thank you so much and God bless you. Thank you, Madam, for those wonderful remarks. Quite very encouraging. Thank you so much. Now I'm going to introduce the panelists. Maybe the font can be slightly bigger. Thank you very much. So I'm uh, introducing the first panelist, who's Dr. Mwawi Ngoma, a mental health nurse specialist and program manager at St. John of God Hospitalio Services. She brings eight years of experience in the education and holds a PhD in mental health from Kamuzu, called, Kamuzu University of Health Sciences. She oversees adolescents and adult mental health services, addiction recovery, and disability programs while coordinating mental health and disability projects including media-based mental health literacy initiatives. Dr. Ngoma's expertise extends to serving as a trustee from the Christian Health Association of Malawi, CHAM, Pension Fund, and the Jesuit Advocacy, Jesuit Advocacy Training and Program Recording to address mental health issues. The second panelist is Mr. 
Kalare Wada, who is a healthcare professional and senior lecturer at Lobasi Institute of Health Sciences, Botswana, with a, a previous experience as a psychiatric mental health nurse. He holds a master's degree in nursing science with a focus on community psychiatric nursing and is pursuing a PhD at Northwest University, South Africa. His research in re research published in reputable journals like the mm -hmm. African Journal of AIDS Research addresses critical issues such as HIV AIDS prevention and mental illness stigma among long distance truck drivers. Dedicated to health education, to healthcare education and research, Mr. Halare is committed to addressing public health challenges in Africa. The third and not the least, it's uh, Dr. Chamangwana Immaculate. She is a seasoned healthcare leader with 30 years of experience in nursing, midwifery, mental health nursing education, and healthcare leadership. She holds a PhD in interprofessional healthcare leadership from the University of Malawi and master's in healthcare resource management from the University of St. Andrews, UK. Dr. Chamangwana has held key, key role such as key role positions such as Deputy Director of Nursing and Midwifery Services and Director of Mental Health Services with the Ministry of Health. She is esteemed for contribution as a researcher, policymaker, manager, and educator, and has chaired healthcare regulatory and professional bodies, including the Nurses and Midwives Council of Malawi and MREF Healthcare in Malawi. Thank you. So those are the panelists that we have today. So we are going to start with uh, Dr. Mawi with her presentation on mental health challenges. Dr. Mawi, I hand over to you for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, moderator, and um, hello, everyone. So as the moderator has indicated, I'm going to talk to you about uh, mental health uh, challenges affecting nurses and midwives that are working in the productive healthcare system. So we all know that nurses and midwives play a major role in healthcare delivery, uh, be it managing units or managing wards, training student nurses or other cadres of health uh, professionals, but also delivering or providing day-to-day -day patient care that includes emotional support uh, to the clients and uh, families. Uh, we also know that um, although both nursing and midwifery are rewarding uh, professions, uh, these can be very uh, stressful or challenging because of the problems that uh, nurses encounter or they meet. So um, when we look at the um, issues that are affecting nurses and uh, midwives uh, internationally, we also see that nurses in sub-Saharan Africa bear the uh, very significant pain due to several factors that they encounter, mainly at policy service delivery, as well as at um, individual level. Um, we know from literature um, that um, nursing practice uh, everywhere is very stressful. Uh, there have been high incidences of um, work-related stress, burnout, as well as mental health problems uh, that have been reported elsewhere. Uh, similarly, regionally, uh, there have been highest levels of burnout that are reported among nurses. So for example, a 2019 systematic review of burnout among health uh, care providers uh, showed that uh, nurses were most affected. This is a systematic review of 65 studies that were conducted in several, in several countries uh, within the uh, sub-Saharan region. So there are several factors that contribute to mental health challenges that uh, nurses face or that would cause mental health problems. So the first one would be limited resources. Um, we see that mostly in our low resource setting or in low and middle income countries, uh, there is a huge uh, lack of resources and equipment in the um, hospitals or in the clinics that our nurses uh, work. 
And this uh, provides a challenge to nurses because they are unable to uh, provide the appropriate care that they are trained to provide or experienced in. Uh, but also they find themselves in a situation where they need to either improvise or make excuses, which is very stressful and um, very uh, depressing to the nurses. Uh, similarly, sometimes uh, because of lack of resources, their working conditions are not very um, uh, desirable. Sometimes there is uh, poor pay, uh, lack of incentives, lack of recognition, as well as uh, career development. Uh, these also are some of the factors that can let down somebody who is um, geared to provide care. Uh, but also it, um, it, it, it demotivates them and it depresses them. Uh, similarly, if there is limited support from other members of my dimensional team that the nurse or midwife is working with, as well as their line managers, these can also be a source of stress to the nurse. So the conflicts in the healthcare system, um, impaired communication are some of the issues that affect nurses and midwives on day-to-day -day basis. And also lack of work-life balance. Uh, because of the longer shifts um, that most nurses and midwives are exposed to because of the shortages uh, or the limited opportunities for them to rest and recover from um, a lot of traumatic uh, experiences that they pass through, uh, this does affect nurses. And it is worse in situations where uh, there have been um, mechanisms to try and address the shortage of staff, where authorities or institutions have introduced uh, things like locum or overtime, you'd find that nurses and midwives would be working extra shifts or extra hours to try and cover uh, that shortage. And that is not healthy to the nurse as an individual, but also that does their performance because somebody cannot continuously um, be more than 24 hours, which is the case in some of the uh, places. Uh, also, in most of our facilities, mainly in low resource setting, we lack workplace mental wellness programs. So um, if we reflect very well, we, we see that uh, most of the traumatic experiences that uh, nurses uh, go through are not a once-off thing. These are their daily um, lives. So each and every day, a nurse midwife might encounter death, might encounter difficult uh, deliveries, or maybe might encounter other complications as they are providing care. So they need to have an opportunity for debriefing as well as uh, some work, mental wellness uh, programs that would help them to cope as well as build uh, resilience. So lack of these uh, contributes to mental uh, challenges because then uh, they have no way out. Um, they have no opportunity to let out the problems that they face. Um, similarly, uh, the health work overload, the heavy work overload. So um, I talked of shortages of nurses uh, before and midwives. In most countries, we are far from uh, reaching the 4.45 um, ratio again of health workers against 1,000 population. You'd find that maybe one nurse is responsible for more than one than population in most countries. So this then overburdens um, the nurse. And uh, as the population grow, uh, we also see a lot of um, diseases coming in. Uh, there have been a lot of pandemics uh, in other countries. There's uh, wars and uh, different challenges. And these also increase the need of healthcare services. And then we are talking of these very few nurses who are required to provide um, reproductive health uh, services to a number of people that keep on growing. So that um, does affect. And when we look at the uh, reproductive healthcare setting, there are some other specific um, challenges. Um, so the shortage of nurses and midwives that I've alluded to, um, it brings out a lot of physical exhaustion. 
Um, imagine if you are a nurse midwife in an antenatal care or in a postnatal uh, unit and you are supposed to provide care to more than um, 100 or 150 uh, mothers and babies. That will be very challenging. At the end of the day, you will be very tired. Uh, you might not be able to provide to your best of your abilities. Uh, you might not be able to spend the required amount of time with the patients or the clients. So um, that uh, then it's a very um, a big challenge for you as well as the uh, service uh, users. Also, I alluded to traumatic experiences before. So these are daily uh, occurrences in the lives of the nurses and midwives in the um, reproductive um, healthcare setting. And also just to emphasize the issue of um, handling mothers' mental health problems. So if you are in a situation where you're not fully prepared to provide maternal mental health um, care, it then becomes a challenge when you encounter a mother that have either a mental health problem or if you're required to provide either psychoeducation or maybe counseling. And that can be very frustrating. So all these um, issues that we've talked about have an impact on the nurse, have an impact on the uh, clients, the patients. It has impact on the healthcare delivery system as well as the community um, in general. So for an individual um, nurse, you'd find that most of the times there are issues of absenteeism, um, there are issues of poor work performance that I've talked about already. Uh, there is increased job turnover, uh, sometimes interpersonal aggression, um, chronic fatigue, uh, but also increased job related injuries as well as mistakes that a nurse midwife might make because they are, are so tired. Um, there are increased heart diseases as well as increased hospitalization for either heart diseases or mental health uh, problems. Uh, similarly, for the um, patients or the clients, there is delays in the care uh, that uh, people expect to receive. Uh, also, there is low quality of care and uh, the medical errors that I alluded to already and then less time that a nurse spends with the um, client. This then uh, translates that the healthcare system is equally affected by the shortage, but also retention challenges, because if people are frustrated, if people are depressed and tired, sometimes they leave the profession. So we see sometimes um, nurses leaving and joining other professions or going back to school to um, be different together. Also, there is limited service availability, uh, there is risk of malpractice, as well as decreased patient satisfaction, and that then increases the cost of healthcare services. And um, long in the run, you'd see that the community and society loses trust in nurses and midwives, they also lose trust in the healthcare delivery system. Um, it also does affect the uh, health of the population or the community um, in a row. So in conclusion, nurses and midwives are susceptible to psychological and uh, mental health problems because of the demanding emotional and physical um, needs of their work. And if these issues are not addressed globally, yeah. this may lead to nurses and midwives distancing themselves emotionally as well as uh, cognitively. So there is an urgent need for action to support and advance mental health well-being of nurses and midwives at all levels. And uh, preventative approaches are required with structure and um, with structural interventions. And my colleague uh, in the following presentation are going to talk about these uh, interventions in details. So all stakeholders have a role to play in promoting mental health of nurses and midwives. So starting with policymakers, because there are some other policies that are detrimental to the health of the nurse as well as the service users. Um, I just gave an example of locum or um, part, um, overtime um, 
measures. Uh, similarly, professional bodies, regulators, organizations uh, also have a major role to look at interventions that specifically address the mental well-being of the nurse. Because we are aware that quality of life and psychological well-being of nurses are major indicators of quality patient care. So once we promote psychological well-being of nurses, we are assured that we contribute to a health work environment. We are assured of um, enhancement in nurse retention, but also improvement of uh, quality care. So um, this is what I wanted to share. Uh, the last slide is just some of the uh, references that I used. Thank you so much for your attention and over to you, moderator. Thank you very much, Dr. Mwawi, for the insightful presentation. So we go to the next presenter, who's Mr. Wada. Mr. Wada, I hand over to you. Thank you very much, Madam Moderator, and hello to everyone. Um, can you just go back to the first slide there? I got it. So my presentation will be on trying to make you recognize the early signs of mental health issues uh, that you can, I mean, that, that you may experience. Yeah, early signs of mental health issues in the reproductive health nurses and the midwives. Thank you. Uh, the introduction, nurses and midwives who work in reproductive health care settings, they experience a, a variety of mental health issues that is related to their work. This is because unexpected events, uh, events or outcomes can occur during pregnancy, during labor, or even birth. So nurses and midwives may experience these events as traumatic. So nurses and midwives uh, encountering adverse effects may be at risk of developing secondary traumatic stress or even psychological and emotional trauma due to factors that are pertinent to their profession. Uh, for instance, you know, they have to have uh, this uh, uh, empathetic engagement and uh, um, also issues to do with organizational stress. So briefly, ladies and gentlemen, my presentation shall focus on the signs and symptoms that are common. Um, I mean, um, signs and symptoms of common mental health issues that can be experienced by nurses and midwives working in the reproductive health care settings. And my focus will be on compassion fatigue, on post-traumatic stress disorders, and burnout. Yes, so I shall start with compassion fatigue. This is the state of mental health when nurses become less compassionate towards their patients as a result of witnessing trauma and experiencing stress regularly. Uh, this also occurs when the healthcare workers uh, care for terminally ill patients. They, they, you know, they witness deaths, assist patients with depression, with post-traumatic post stress disorder, with anxiety or other mental health conditions. Um, then the next one, the next mental health issue, uh, you know, that uh, can be encountered or can be experienced by nurses and the midwives working in, in this uh, setting is post-traumatic stress disorder. Nurses and midwives in the reproductive health, health settings may experience PTSD uh, predominantly due to births resulting in serious injury or even death of mothers and the babies. So this happens a lot and it, it predisposes the nurses and midwives, you know, to uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. And some of the symptoms that one can, uh, you know, can experience um, are re-experiencing the trauma through flashbacks and intrusive thoughts. So if one has encountered, you know, you know, an incident, this is what they will uh, you know, they'll go through re-experiencing re the trauma. They may also have some nightmares and sustained high anxiety. They may have problems with concentration and they may also have chronic negative emotional state. And uh, um, they may also have diminished interest in activities and sleep disturbances. Um, 
But it is also important to note that before I go to burnout with the post-traumatic stress disorder, that um, um, the symptoms, this re-experience of these symptoms, one may start to experience them after a month of exposure to a traumatic event, or it can even be delayed to some months or, or even some years before one starts experiencing signs of post-traumatic stress disorder. So now, uh, the next mental health issue that people can have is burnout. So the early signs of burnout, uh, I've categorized them into three, but uh, the first one is commonly known as uh, the exhaustion. So basic individual strain, dimension of work-related stress, that is part of the exhaustion, recognizable signs that include chronic fatigue and mental exhaustion, and prompts actions to distance oneself emotionally and cognitively from work. One might, uh, you know, have that feeling of not wanting to go at work. And also observable behavioral signs that include unexplained sick leave, absenteeism, and maladaptive coping, such as, you know, one engaging in, uh, in, in the use of substances. And also one may have reduced the productivity and accomplishment in work tasks. All right. Uh, the other early signs of burnout or other dimensions of then, uh, burnout, there's what is called the cynicism. Uh, this is the interpersonal context, the dimension of work-related stress. So the signs may include the negative, you know, uncaring or excessive detached responses to work. So there is some kind of uh, carefree behavior. So it represents an attempt to distance oneself from various aspects of the job. So the other dimension of, uh, of burnout is inefficiency or reduce the accomplishment. So that uh, involves self-evaluation dimension of work-related stress that involves feelings of incompetence or lack of achievement. So this is how somebody uh, will feel when they experience burnout. Um, or inefficiency. And it also reflects the reduce the productivity and accomplishment in work tasks. So basically, somebody, you know, wants to distance themselves from work and they don't want to engage again at work. And, they, you know, they display that carefree uh, behavior that I mentioned. The consequences of stress overload from what I've already, you know, presented, if you have got, you know, overload of all this, uh, undue and prolonged anxiety, persistent state of fear or free-floating anxiety, that seems to have many alternating causes. And one may also start to experience some phobias. So these are the consequences of stress overload. One may also have depression, which is characterized by withdrawal from family and from social activities and inability to experience uh, emotions and helplessness. So one may also have, uh, you know, sudden changes in their mood and behavior, uh, which may be exhibited as uh, a, a erratic behavior. So this is what one can pick, uh, you know, in somebody who has got, you know, stress overload, uh, you know, the consequences of unattended uh, stress. So one may also have, you know, some kind of perfectionism which is characterized by setting of high standards for self, but then acting in continued stress. And of course, um, physical illnesses, such as, you know, ulcers, migraines, you know, body aches, et cetera, et cetera. So these are some of the uh, symptoms that one may have because of being, you know, consequences of uh, stress overload. Now, I just want to give a picture of mental health services delivery in Botswana. So there is a limited number of psychiatric nurses. According to Mental Health Atlas, that is WHO 2020, there are only 211 psychiatric nurses in public service. So that translates to 9.16 you know, per 100,000 population. And now worse, migration of psychiatric nurses contributes to dwindling uh, numbers uh, you know, of, of nurses in the country where, you know, when now they, they, they leave the country to go for greener pastures. 
um, integration into nursing curricula. So mental health nursing uh, is integrated into basic nursing education and is addressed at all levels of a health system. So meaning to say, if somebody comes and then they've got a mental health issue, you know, or psychological issue, you know, um, our general nurses can be able to, 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 to assess, to diagnose, and even to assist and refer uh, appropriately because um, psychiatric mental health nursing is integrated into the basic or generic nursing education. Uh, the other challenge uh, that is there, you know, with regard to mental health services delivery here in our country, um, is that uh, mental health services uh, is highly stigmatized. Nurses internalize the prejudice and perpetuate, perpetuate these stereotypes. So, you know, just like you know, the common self stigma that we know, uh, you know, we also have nurses also self stigmatizing, you know, by internalizing this, um, uh, you know, this stigmatizing uh, attitudes and everything, then they also start now to, to stigmatize the services. The recommendations. Uh, the first one is sensitizing nursing fraternity. Then there's also it's also important to have strategies for distress reduction. Related mental health programs are important, like the, pre uh, the previous presenter has alluded to. There's uh, also need for uh, I mean importance of supporting work environment. That this is very very essential, and also integration into nursing education. So. Uh, it is very, very important to integrate uh, mental health nursing into the general nursing education so that, you know, they've got, um, you know, they can be able to attend to the mental health issues, you know, at primary health care level before they make referrals to the psychiatric nurses and to other areas. And now the conclusion. Um, any recognition is crucial for preventive uh, solutions, any recognition of signs and symptoms. So, you know, I was predominantly uh, making a presentation on signs and symptoms so that people can be able to recognize these symptoms if they, they experience them, you know, you know, for crucial preven uh, preventive solutions. Uh, customized interventions vital for reproductive health, uh, care nurses and midwives. So it's important to have a specific Customize the tailor-made uh, interventions, you know, for reproductive health care nurses and midwives, you know, mental health, uh, you know, programs uh, and activities, you know, to assist them. Uh, aim to enhance energy, vigor, and, re and resilience. It is important to enhance energy, vigor, and resilience, you know, in our nursing uh, personnel. So also to promote involvement and absorption in in workplaces, uh, ensure dedication and the sense of efficacy. It's important for people to have a sense of efficacy, to feel that you know they are so effic efficacious, you know, in their deliberation of you know of their duties as nurses and midwives. Importance of identifying, importance of identifying any signs of burnout. So I've presented on the signs of burnout. So it's important to identify the early signs. So that people can seek, um, you know, some some interventions, or they can be assisted pro uh, promptly. So preventive interventions are also important for individual and organizational well-being because it doesn't only affect an individual. You know, when people go through all this, also the organization is also equally affected because there will be a lot of absenteeism, a lot of sick leaves, and so forth and so on. So that's how I conclude. Next slide. Thank you very much, Mr. Wada, for that insightful presentation again. So now we'll would go to Dr. Immaculate Chamangwana to present her presentation. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, uh, moderator and colleagues. My presentation, as highlighted on the screen, is uh, provide evidence-based strategies to promote self-care, stress management, and resilience building among healthcare professionals. In terms of uh, introduction, 
it is stated that healthcare delivery systems are faced with numerous problems. And this is also in line with the WHO a framework on interprofessional education and collaborative practice. And this is due to increased the demand, disease burden, a shortage of staff, as well as the, some other resources which can help healthcare professionals to provide better care. And evidence has also shown that utilizing evidence-based strategies in addressing uh, the problems which come about as a result of those challenges, they have a positive effect on the individual, organization, society, as well as healthcare professionals, which at the end uh, result into improved well-being of the providers, as well as in retention of the staff, as well as also providing quality of care to the majority who, who seek services in our health facilities. In terms of evidence-based strategies, first of all, we look at preventive strategies for mental health, or we may call them psychological training support. These training support uh, programs are there to equip healthcare professionals with knowledge and skills which they can be able to utilize whenever they face problems, which my previous colleagues have hi highlighted. One of the training is stress management training. And the stress management training, they help to reduce severe workplace stresses and also help the healthcare workers to cope up with the stress in the workplace. Resilience trainings is one of the preventive trainings which we can provide to our uh, healthcare professionals. This training increases also healthcare workers' resilience, resilience stress, at the same time promotes being of the providers. We also have mindful-based cognitive therapy, which provides psychological support and ending up helping to reduce stress, burnout, but also equips healthcare professionals on some of the strategies and skills and be able to use when they are with the uh, challenges in the workplace. Much as we appreciate the importance of preventive strategies, it is very important for the healthcare settings to also have in place the responsive interventions for mental health crisis. Some of these include emergency telephone helplines where individuals or individual professionals are able to call in and seek help on stressful situations. They are given advice, the counseling, or other skills which they can be able to manage these problems they are facing. Counseling and psychological support interventions are also very important in workplaces, which admittedly are provided by the healthcare organizations themselves. And these also help to reduce stress and improve quality of life of the providers. Support groups or peer groups. Peer groups are very important. Communication which appears within these groups is very important, which helps individuals to ventilate and be able to appreciate the previous experiences of others and be able to adopt some of the strategies which worked well with the previous experiences on to, and be able to be applied to the current situations. And that also helps to increase and improve healthcare resilience improve and reduce stress, but also promote the well-being of the healthcare providers. One of the strategies establishing supportive team-based approaches, all having building strong support networks. These networks or supportive teams in our health facilities have proved to be very, very, very important because it allows open communication 
And there is mutual uh, trust amongst the colleagues when they are facing uh, challenging times. They have different problems, but with these supportive teams, they are able to share the possible alternatives they can use and be able to handle the problems. We have mentors and supervisors in the workplace. It is the responsibility of these individuals to provide valuable insights to healthcare workers, as well as guidance, so that they are able to manage and go through stressful situations effectively and maintain uh, the well-being while continuing providing care to our patients. Engaging in regular exercises is also very, very important. We have just the previous speakers um, noted some of the problems which occur, but encouraging our healthcare workers despite the busy schedules and the shortage and the problems we have. It is very important also to encourage having exercises, physical exercises, which also helps in relieving stress and be able to uplift one's mood. But at the same time, having uh, these physical exercises, they provide some rest and relaxation, which also helps to overcome stress burdens and other problems. And these in other um, facilities, they're also used to manage some of the problems we have in our health facilities like non-communicable diseases, which also have negatively affected the healthcare professionals. So it is very important to have such strategies in the workplace and be able to be implemented and be used by the healthcare way. Work life balance and boundaries. This is very important. And it, uh, my colleague previously has also mentioned of that. And it is very always important to observe the life between the professional responsibilities and the personal life. We have to engage and encourage the healthcare professionals to have time to rest, relax and do some other activities, as mentioned before, uh, exercises, so that they have time to rest and be able to prevent some of the problems which you have mentioned, like burnout and also stress. And we, in the workplace, the managers or employers, we should be able to see and promote the work environment that values the work-life balance so that we maintain uh, healthcare workers' resilience, as well as the world, their well-being while they continue to provide care to our patients. We need to appreciate that some problems within the workplace, they might need um, professional support. So it is very important to be able to recognize the, the experiences and the contribution of other professionals in the existing problems and be able to refer certain situations to such uh, professionals for professional advice as well as for professional guidance. And such things, we should be able to have like counseling services, therapy as well as psychosocial like support, which are very much important in addressing issues of stress but at the same time also uh, managing the underlying mental health problems, which might be experienced by mm -hmm. individuals, individual uh, healthcare professionals. Advocating for systematic, for systematic change. Addressing the root causes of challenges in healthcare requires systematic change at organization and society levels. There is need to have a to advocate for policies that will promote and prioritize the well-being of healthcare workers by providing adequate staffing levels, ad, uh, providing resources, but at the same time also creating sustainable change in the workplace. We have to encourage collaborating with the stakeholders to implement evidence-based interventions which also promote the culture of awareness 
and foster a healthcare system that supports both the welfare of the patients as well as the providers. Collaborating and coordinating with the different stakeholders and professionals will be able to promote the management of the complex problems which have already been highlighted and discussed by the previous uh, stakeholder, uh, as previous uh, presenters. And these are very important because we share different expertise and we share different experiences, resources, and then we'll be able to manage such particular problems in our health facilities than working as in, in isolation. Teamwork is very, very important. In terms of recommendations, managing healthcare professional challenges need collaborative efforts. And policy makers, they need to promote excellent conditions of service by providing optimum staffing levels, effective communication policies at all levels, the policies which will be known by everybody and be able to implement and follow. Organizations need to improve working environment for healthcare workers and prevent poor mental health from occurring so that we are able to provide preventive strategies through trainings, as we have mentioned, um, resilient trainings, um, stress management training, and other trainings which will be able to give insight on mental health issues within uh, our healthcare settings. And uh, our professionals will be able to understand them and be able to recognize them early so that they also are sick appropriate treatment as early as possible. Development of effective leaders within the organizations as change agents. We need leaders who should be able to lead. I have visionary, but at the same time, role models to the healthcare professionals. The leaders who will be able to, to show the difference in terms of service delivery. We need those in our organizations. We need to have clear and accessible policies. Mental health at workplace. What is it that we have? What do we need to do so that we promote the well being of our mental health uh, professionals? And other uh, policies which we may have, like care of the care, so that we are able to help each other in terms of need. Professional bodies, they need also to advocate for better uh, services and welfare of healthcare workers. In terms of the numbers, availability of resources in the workplace, as well as maybe uh, remuneration, it is the responsibility of professional bodies. My colleagues have mentioned of regulatory bodies, they also have a role to play in improving the services in our healthcare settings. The managers at all levels also need a greater understanding of the work which is happening in our healthcare services and the impact it has on the, uh, in terms of mental health, on the well being of the healthcare professionals, and take effective uh, responsibilities and actions to support the staff. Individuals, we have also the responsibility as providers of care to look into the, our own welfare as we have highlighted to say we need to have professional and life balances but at the same time we need to observe oh, as well as the our as well as the leave days so that we have time to rest and be able to come back to work a while we are just have been used effectively globally uh as well as in africa and if they are well implemented, the, the welfare of the providers, as well as the quality of care, which is going to be provided in our healthcare settings. Thanks so much for you, uh, the time you have given me during this presentation. Thank you. Thank you very, very much to all the presenters. Those were very insightful and very, very wonderful presentation. I'm so excited as one person who loves mental health, and I'm sure the participants will agree with me. So we'll have uh, 
10 minutes only for questions and answers. So I will only pick three questions. So people should lift their hands and uh, ask, we we'll only pick three questions, but the rest can put their questions in the chat box. They will be able to, uh, to be addressed. And if not addressed, you can contact the presenters in person. You can get their details and have a one-on-one. -on -one. So you can ask your questions, just three questions. I may not be able to see the hands, but if Nina can help me with the people so that they can speak out the questions. And please don't forget to mention the, the person whom the question is directed to. Thank you. And yeah, you can go ahead and ask. Yeah, we have Jones. Jones, can you come in with your question? Um, th thank you very much, uh, Lemmy, and uh, thank you very much, all the presenters. These are indeed wonderful presentations. So my name is John Zimasie. I'm the manager for Nanigomunikabo Disease Mental Health and Nutrition uh, Food Security at the Exa Healthy Community. Uh, my question is, yes, I was looking at the challenges in terms of uh, that Dr. Mai presented that there's lack of work-life balance. I don't know, how do we balance in terms of, you know, you find that most of the times when people or nurses have worked their hours, let's say 42 hours, and they're supposed to go and uh, to rest, you find that most of the times they also fill in for the locum shifts. This brings the burnout because people are interested in getting extra resources than resting. So how do we balance with this? Because yes, we want to do, we have recommended how we can reduce the burnout, but how do we balance with the locum and the burnout? I wanted uh, uh, you to respond to this one. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Masi. Next, I'm, an, I'm not able to see the hands. The next person can go. Any hand? So we have a question. Hi, this is Nina. We have a question on the chat um, as we wait for one more question on the audience that was asking, in Malawi, where can healthcare providers access stress management and resilience trainings. So that question is from Chrissy Hussein. Thank you. The last question. Can we have the last question? Feel free, feel free. Can we have the last question? Okay, it looks like there are no questions. The presentations were very elaborate. So I think the, the people who are to answer the question will take it up. But I also noted one question in the chat box where somebody was asking about the recommended ratio, nurse midwife ratio per day. Probably some of the nurses, they don't know. So any of the panelists can pick it up. So we have three questions now. Over to you, panelists. Thank you, moderator. I'm going to pick the question that was asked by um, Dr. Masie. Um, indeed, this becomes a challenge where there are these uh, policies where nurses are required um, to do locum or overtime. But when you look at the background, locum or overtime are introduced because there is shortage. And um, then the same nurse is forced to apply for locum. So indeed, you'd find that some nurses would knock off at five and then start locum at 5.30 or at six, just having one hour rest, which is not really um, healthy. So um, what I would recommend is uh, for policymakers and managers to address um, the reasons why they brought in locum in the first place. So once those are addressed, then there will be no need for nurses to be doing overtime unless there are emergencies. Um, and also uh, for policymakers and um, managers to look at improving the working conditions. Uh, because once these are improved, if nurses and midwives are properly remunerated, 
um, if they are able to get proper incentives, they might not be attracted to go for um, extra pay because of overtime. So that really becomes a challenge for nurses to uh, balance. And indeed, um, in our situation, for example, like Malawi, sometimes nurses are overburdened because they just continued, they continue um, working. Thank you. Over to you, moderator. Thank you. I hope it's clear. I think the other questions can be answered. The other one, when they access uh, services in Malawi, I don't know who's going to pick that question. Hello, moderator. Yes, madam. Uh, I think um, I can be able to respond to that. Um, accessing stress management and resilience trainings. Uh, I wouldn't mention specific, but as explained in the presentation, to say that we need to incorporate the such trainings. And I'm sure in Malawi, in our health facilities, we have got programs like CPDs, and we have CPDs, we see them, uh, being provided by the professional bodies as well as the regulatory bodies, but we also have programs trainings within our healthcare facilities, like uh, uh, in services, and we come up with the identifying um, priority training needs, and these are some of the topics which we need to be able to put within our trainings and use our uh, seasoned resource persons to take the healthcare professionals through such trainings like the uh, stress management as well as resilient uh, trainings. When you look at the mental health, the national mental health policy, one of the strategies is to enhance or promote the trainings uh, on mental health of the professional mental health, as well as the general healthcare workers. The issue is to make sure that everybody has got insight on mental health issues so that they can be able to use the knowledge and skills to manage other problems. So this is very, very important to do that, as well as implementing the policies, which we say we need to have those policies, which are going to look at the welfare of the healthcare providers. Not only policies which we can just keep, but we should be able to implement. And also we can manage and also access such trainings if we re indeed we have got um, policies like at workplace, a mental health at workplace. Such issues should be included and benefit the providers. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much, Madam. Very clear. There was also a question on recommendation, nurse midwife uh, recommendation per per patient per day. Maybe somebody can pick it. And I've seen uh, one question. I don't know if you can pick it from Mas Mustafiri in the inbox. Mustafiri. Thank you. You can take the one for recommended nurse patient ratio. Anybody? Okay. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, I would say uh, with regard to, to this one, the, uh, the, uh, the workload of nurses and midwives is often managed using staffing models. And the most well-known is um, you know, the nurse or midwife to patient ratios. And generally, you know, the ratio models, you know, they specify you know, a ratio of four patients, I mean, of, of uh, uh, four patients to one midwife uh, uh, per day. So for four patients, Nurse, generally. Thank you. So the last question, maybe we can answer. I've seen somebody, uh, is it shared by is asking, what have other countries in the region done to put the mental health policy in uh, action? If I've gotten him clear. I don't know, anybody can pick it. I think this will be the last question. What has the any country in the in the region probably this one he could share with any of the other people i think it might take us long or maybe somebody can pick it or we leave it for one on one we'll leave it for one on one thank you very much 
So I think my time of moderating has ended. Thank you very much to the participants for your listening and for your contributions and for your questions. And I would like to thank the panelists very much for your wonderful presentation. And I've seen in the box, they're saying that the presentations are going to be shared to all of us. So I hand over to Nina. Thank you very much, Ms. Nancy. And thank you, everyone. We are seeing all the comments. We are seeing all the questions. Um, we are happy that we were able to have a Q&A session uh, together. So uh, next, we will have... <clears throat> I'm going to welcome our colleague from uh, North Success, who will uh, tell us more about the the page we are seeing on our screen. Um, so great, I will welcome uh, George to come in and share with us what we are seeing on this screen right now. Thank you so much, Nina Bina. Thank you so much, everyone, for the wonderful presentations that we've been able to go through. And uh, at this point in time, I want us to go into another exciting episode of this particular webinar, which is uh, introduction to FP Insight. So FP Insight is a family planning resource tool that is being uh, championed by Knowledge Success. And I know all of us are eager, uh, eager here to gain more knowledge in the area of family planning and reproductive health. And that's how, how FP Insight uh, comes as a tool that is uh, ready for use for you as a service provider or as people who are working in this space to be able to curate and uh, access more resources that will be able to build your capacity in the field of family planning and reproductive health services. We have a lot of collections in family in the, in the family planning insight. And uh, this is a simple tool that you're able to upload as an app within your mobile phone. And you can also accept, access it within your laptop or even your desktop. So to access uh, Family Planning Insight, you click into uh, www.fpinsight.org, which is a website that you're able to use to access uh, Family Planning uh, Insight and access all the collections that are inside it there, therein. How important is this particular tool that we are, or how important is this particular resource for you as a service provider or as a person who is working in this uh, domain? So there are key things that you are able to benefit here. For example, you are able to uh, access more in terms of getting, uh, uh, curating your resources. Uh, you are also able to use it to discover and get inspired in terms of what is happening in this space. And more importantly, if you are in the research space and you are doing your work, you are able to also curate and also uh, uh, store your work inside there, thereby contributing to your skills in, in, in terms of research skills, but also importantly helping you to do more with regards to uh, uh, accessing resources that would be able to help you sharpen your skills in the area of FP and reproductive health. So to access this, you are supposed to go into www.fpinsight.org. If you are able to, or, or maybe you can post the, on, the, on the chat. So if you go to the link on the chat uh, that is being posted on the chat, you are able to get access to a page or family planning insights page. So when you are in that page, you are able to, for example, if you are able to get into that uh, link that has been posted on the chat, then you are able to get direct into the a page that will be able to take you to mental health and resilience in reproductive health. So you are able to, if you are you are able to access that page, you are able to also uh, check on type. For example, if you type mental health you are able to get into what is trending and what is up to date with regards to family planning resources and what is also up to date with mental health resources that are, you are able to learn more on and also get to understand more that is happening in the area of mental health and also with regards to family planning. 
So that is how all with regards to family planning insight. And we welcome you all to be able to make use of this tool. If you have not registered uh, for this tool, please do register. If you are no, if you have not registered for this app, please take this opportunity to register for this app and get uh, going with regards to many many resources that are uh, that are available at uh, the family planning insight uh, page. So I believe all of us are, are are able to log into the page. All of us are able to also get access to family planning uh, uh, to, to, to the page and get more with regards to uh, uh, resources that are uh, around the mental health and sexual reproductive health. Uh, I would pause there and uh, welcome Nina Bina to take us to the next slide. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, George. Um... Just to add up on what George has said, all that all that the insights of uh, today's panelists will also be in that um okay. in, in that insight. So you are all welcome to register and, and be able to to look into them um quite well. Next, I would like to now do our second interesting poll that we have. Um, for the past one hour that we have um, sit together and 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 learned and discussed and shared on our um, on on this webinar, if you can all see on your screens, there will be a post webinar poll that also has um, uh, eight questions um, that uh, you can just uh, look into. If you can all see on your screens, please you can just type yes. Or you can see, and you we can take uh so the next two minutes to respond to this, and um and we can proceed. So uh, please take your time to these two minutes to uh look into the poll and be able to respond. I'm still processing that their mother is being treated with the early stages of cancer. They will no doubt be spending the next few weeks away from the public eye, particularly. I'm also seeing that um, we have shared our email addresses and I would um, we have all recorded all the email addresses that have been shared on the chat and we will respond accordingly. And all the other questions that were in the chat will also be able to um, respond to them and we will be able also to share um, any of the contacts of the panelists so that um, we are able to communicate with them. As we all know that Exacon is um, is a college without borders. So we are all working in one. And I will give, uh, I'll give us one more minute to work on the post webinar poll so that we can uh, finish and close um, on time. Great, I'm seeing that we are done um with the poll thank you very much for all that are continuing to answer if the poll will still be on the screen and um moving on i would like to welcome um uh madam lenny to give us a vote of thanks and to speak to us this evening thank you Thank you so much, uh, Nina Bina. Thank you, uh, Madam Nancy, our moderator. Thank you, panelists, for the good presentations. It was very informative. And to tell the truth, there's an added value to our knowledge, but also how we are going to manage our mental health in general. So, second, we are taking this very seriously. And as our Madam uh, Oya Elizabeth introduced that Exacon, we are now offering fellowship programs that are equivalent to the master's level. And one of the priority technical area that we are coming up with is mental health. So we want nurses, a pool of nurses who can 
uh, do this in a higher level as specialty in our facilities, but also policy making, but also in the management to help not only nurses and midwives, but all healthcare providers as a whole. So thank you so much. And we look forward to a very interesting topic. We've requested for your recommendation on which topics should be considered for our upcoming webinars. And we'll review that and select one for the next month, April. So we are going to have monthly webinars. Very interesting, very engaging, and the topics that are really key for our um, changes in the facilities, but also changing the communities. Because if the nurses and midwives are well and have healthy, um, are healthy mentally and physically, I think we can provide the high quality care to our community, and then the the care, the community that we are serving will also become healthy because we will smile to them, we will welcome them, we will treat them with happiness, with passion. All these come when we are well mentally, but also physically and all the mental process. Thank you so much and welcome to Exacon. Please, if you are not a member, join. We'll get your email, we'll reach out to you for the non-members to direct you how to join. And also welcome to our conference in September. It's a big conference. We always have uh, 1,000 plus nurses and midwives in other professions. So we'll share more details on the conference, but Asante Sana, we say it in Swahili, Asante Sana. And I wish you a good evening for the East Africa, South African, South African parts. And let's meet for the next webinar. We will share all the documents like the recording, which has the presentations in place. Thank you so much. Asante and bye. Asante bye. sana. Bye. 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 bye.